Hi guys, my name is Ashutosh and I am a machine learning engineer at TikTok. First of all, I'd like to thank Raj and the entire team of Azura for allowing me to create content for the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the high level design process for ML system design interviews. So when we talk about high level design or HLD, we often associate it with the software system design where the components like uh, load balancer or servers, message queues, and uh, rate limiters and things like that is associated. But when you are appearing for the ML role uh, or ML research scientist role or ML engineer role, uh, you will not be expected to uh, design systems using these software system comp components. Instead, the focus will be more on the machine learning components like how would you select features, how would you do feature engineering, uh, how would you uh, train the model, how would you serve the model what's the incremental improvement aspects for the model and things like that. So in this video, we are going to talk about the HLD or high level designing process of the machine learning system design interview interview questions. So in simpler terms, uh, how would you structure your response in your machine learning system design interview so that your uh, response is very organized and still you can cover like a lot more details uh, if you want. So let's get started. So the first part is clarifying requirements. So when you appear for the interview, interviewer will give you certain requirements like design a YouTube search or something like that. And uh, your job is to ask questions, clarifying questions about like what data is given, uh, how would we use this model in production, what's the business objective for uh, doing this and things like that. A and once we understand the requirements, the, the second option is to convert the objective into an ML problem. So basically, the interviewer will tell you the business objective. Let's say, for example, the interviewer tells you that, okay, we are YouTube and we want to improve our user search experience on, uh, on the YouTube platform. And the business objective behind that is that we want to keep the user on the platform and keep watching the videos as, as, as much as they want. And to do that, one thing is that we can improve our search recommendation. So if user is searching something, we want to provide more relevant result results to the user. And uh, and how would you like solve that with a machine learning system? So you need to understand this business objective first, and then you need to convert it into an ML problem, which is a machine learning problem. And you can do that with something like, uh, let's say, okay, I want to improve the user search. So what's the ML problem that I, I, I can get? I have the user related information, uh, what user is interested in uh, with user embeddings and things like that. And I have a search term that the user has entered. And based on that, I can do some sort of uh, video filtering. And then uh, based on that, I can do a video ranking and things like that. So, uh, so what we did is we converted a business objective into a machine learning problem. And uh, you also need to define that machine learning problem to the interviewer uh, so that you and the interviewer are on the same page. Uh, once you establish the machine learning problem uh, for your objective, then you need to move on to the data collection process. Uh, you need to define how would you collect the data uh, at first when you are building the model for the first time. And if the interviewer has provided the data requirements that, okay, we have certain amount of past data, uh, which you can use for uh, training the model, which you can use for training the model, then you can uh, then you can mention how would you use that data to train the actual model. You also need to talk about like which format you would store the data in and what features are most important and you would store them in what format. Moreover, you can also mention about like how would you collect the organic data. Well, let's say you deploy this model into production on YouTube and users will search something and they would find some relevant results. How would you use that organic data to, to again incrementally improve your model and things like that? So you can also mention that in here. After, me, after mentioning the data collection, you can move on to discussing the feature engineering. So what type of feature engineering would do? Because you might collect, like, let's say, millions of uh, features uh, in your data collection, but uh, the model is not that complicated to use the millions of features. So what 
uh, features would you use and how would you select those features so basically how would you uh, establish a feature importance uh, for your features and in what format you would feed the features into your model so basically let's say we have a many different users on our platform so usually people have ids corresponding to those users these ids are like alphanumeric numbers or just numeric numbers uh, for each users and then based on these uh, integers uh, there is an associated embedding or a vector, a uh, float vector associated with those uh, IDs and then we feed those vectors uh, as a feature into, into the model. So it means we create the ID embeddings. Then we also create like uh, composite features uh, using some interaction models like FM and FFM and things like that. So you can also mention that here uh, in, in feature engineering. And you can also mention like how would you create labels because for machine learning model to train, you also you don't you don't just need input data, you also need the output ground truth labels to train it and optimize the machine learning model effectively. And you can mention how would you get create the labels or how would you generate the labels from the organic data which is being generated in real time. Once we talk about the feature engineering, then you can move on to the primary model creation and training part so uh, and here you can discuss about like how would you create the model and how does the model will look like uh, you can also uh, you can also mention some architectural details about like okay you can use transformer here it will help in this way and you can use let's say uh, a deep interest network and things like that so you can discuss a very light uh, design details uh, while creating the models and very importantly you should mention about the loss function optimizer and uh, framework that you would use to implement this machine learning model. Once you discuss about the model creation, then you would also need to uh, discuss about the model training. So how would you train the model? Because uh, generally what happens is that uh, the real-time recommendation system or let's say any system which is uh, deployed into production in real time uh, is getting like millions of user samples per day and that's why people often require GPU training as compared to CPU training because GPU training is usually very fast but that also ha adds an overhead that we would spend a lot more cost if we uh, train uh, on GPUs uh, and not CPUs. So you can discuss this trade-off and depending on the use case uh, which the interviewer has given to you, uh, you can uh, either choose CPU training or GPU training and you can just justify your results. You can also mention about distributed training, how would you distribute uh, your model workflow for serving and things like that. Once you uh, once we discuss the model creation and training pipeline, uh, you can move on to the serving uh, workflow. So how would you serve the model? So uh, once you distribute your model for serving, how would, you, how would the serving would work? Whether the serving is global distribution or is it a region-wise distribution? What I mean by that is that uh, once a model is deployed, is it serving all the users in the world or is it serving only a particular re region, let's say a US users or let's say uh, Asian users and things like that. So how would your model serve in real time? Usually uh, big companies like Google and Meta and TikTok, they usually have a region wise distribution of the model because the region wise user distribution or the user preference distribution also would vary a lot. For example, let's say a user who is living in India might have a different type of interest than a user who is living in US. And because of that, we often have a region wise distribution. But there is also a problem with region wise distribution that you would have to replicate this entire serving pipeline in different regions and that would create a lot more uh, cost overhead. And uh, you can mention these sort of trade-offs and choose the serving workflow which would be useful for the model. Now, once we discuss the serving part, we can move on to discuss the evaluation part. Now, there can be two types of evaluation. One is offline evaluation and another is online evaluation. Offline evaluation is what we can like calculate the uh, performance of the model based on just the uh, ground truth labels we have a label 0 1 and uh, we have some prediction on the on on the model data and using this prediction and the label which we ha which is provided uh, we would calculate some metrics like precision recall and auc and things like that and these and this is offline evaluation similarly we also look at the online evaluation as well and the online evaluation is done uh, based on the business metrics of the model uh, or where the model is actually used. So 
in terms of like let's say of our youtube example uh, how many of the users find the recommendations which we generate for search useful and for that uh, we will check how many of the users will click on the first or the second video which we give as a recommendation and that is a good metric so uh, uh, and that that is in the recommendation space it is called like let's say cdr which is click through rate of the model so th that is an online metric so we can visualize this sort of online metrics to check the model performance overall from the user's perspective. Once we check the evaluation, which uh, both offline and on online evaluation, you also need to mention the incremental improvement aspects because in industrial setting, usually the workflow is that you deploy the model and you improve it incrementally as the new data comes. It is not like you develop the model and then you deploy it and then you forget about it. It's not like that. What we do is like we deploy the model and then the new data comes every day. We would fine tune the model every day on that data and then we would redeploy that model on the same day uh, so that the model improves over time and it also learns the data distribution which would also change over time. And that's why incremental improvement is very important aspect in the machine learning space. And I think all the big companies who are creating industry scale products uh, are using this incremental improvement aspects in their model and that's it so this is the overall high level design process for the machine learning system design interviews and you can follow each and every step of this process and you can design your response for the machine learning problem given to you during the interview if you follow this guideline it will help you structure your response in a proper way such that the interviewer will not get confused into the details that you are sharing about the, the about solving the problem i hope Hope you have found this video useful and insightful if you did then please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you